Hey friends, it is Tuesday, and you know what that means. We are taking a listener's question and answering it in 10 minutes or less. Can we do it? We sure can. Enjoy today's show. It's Quick Tip Tuesday. You have questions, I have answers, and I am so glad to be answering them for you today. If you have a question that you want answered on the show, pop into my DMs on Instagram at Fig and Farm. Send me an email at Fig and Farm at home at gmail.com or join the Facebook group and ask there. bit.ly forward slash design 101 group. Let's hop to it. Let's answer your question. And if you find value in this, I'm sure someone else will too. So make sure you share with a friend. Today's question comes from Molly and she is wondering, how do I make my home the place that I love? And I love this question so much, Molly, because just in asking it, you are recognizing that your home is really important. It's a powerful place for you and your family. But it also makes me a little sad because in asking it, I am guessing that you don't quite love it. So we're going to walk through ways that you can change your mindset about home and tactical steps that you can do to begin loving it. So what I want you to think about this first, Molly, is this. If you share your space, even if it's just you, but if you share your space with your with your family, your husband and your kiddos, your home is a living legacy. It is like you as the homeowner are the author to the story that your home tells. You are the artist to the canvas that your home is. And that might sound really cliche, but I want you to really embrace that role. If your home, if your home reflects your story, thinking of yourself as the author thinking of yourself as the illustrator of what it is you want your home to project to others, including yourself and your family, that is really, really powerful. It's when we get in this place of my home is happening to me, where we are stuck and there's really not a whole lot we can do about it. So first off, embracing this idea that you're the author, you're the storyteller, you're the illustrator, you are the one who is making beauty happen if you choose to. Because the hard truth right now, Molly, is that your home is already saying something. It is. The ultimate compliment that you can receive when people come in to your space, they think, oh my gosh, Molly, this is so you. Whatever that you looks like. Maybe it's super eclectic and really fun. Maybe it's boho and flea market chic. Maybe it is super luxurious and you embrace a quiet luxury feel. Whatever it is. It is no doubt, there is no doubt from the people who know you best and love you best when they walk in the door and think, oh my gosh, this is so incredibly you. That is the goal. So Molly, now we're going into the tangibles. What does that look like and how do we get that? And Molly, get out a piece of paper, okay? Because you're going to need to do a little journaling, but I want you to think about how your home feels currently. Does your home feel like you? Does it look like you? Does it represent you in the way that you want it to? Are you super colorful and vibrant and really spunky and fun and you have no color anywhere? That could be problematic, right? But if we just focus right now on the feeling word, how do you want your home to feel and does it currently feel that way? That is going to be powerful information. So right now, write down how your home feels and just let it come out of you. Just let it flow. Just write down anything that you can possibly think of. It feels junky. It feels cluttered. It feels too claustrophobic. It feels not welcoming. It feels ugly. I don't know, Molly. I sure hope those aren't your words, but maybe they are. And then if you share your space with your family, I want you to ask them. And I want you to to go into that conversation with eyes wide open and a heart that is still ready to receive even the words that they say that might not feel very good. If they say, mom, our home just doesn't feel like I, I don't feel like I can invite my people over. Well, why? Ask them more questions, but don't take offense because we are now making change. We're going to make the next step towards change. Ask your husband too, or the people you share your home with, ask them, what does our home feel like? Do you like that? And if they do, fantastic. If they don't, okay, well, how do you want your home to feel? And Molly, now you're doing the same thing. How do you want your home to feel? Do you want your home to feel like that one movie you watched that one time? Like any of the Nancy Meyer movies, you know, with Diane Keaton as a starring actress. 
those ones that feel so calm and soothing and cozy and comfortable and lived in and relaxed and all the things? Do you want it to feel like it is constantly clean and you could eat off the floor? (laughs) Do you want it to feel like that one picture you saw on Pinterest that one time? Because every time you look at that one picture, you feel like you could step out of your space right now and into that computer screen. And if you have an inspiration photo, kind of like that, that movie I just mentioned or that picture I just mentioned, if you have that, I want you to really dissect it. Well, what is it about those spaces that make it feel that way? Because you are feeling something. It's not just your your eyes taking in a vision. You are feeling something when you're looking at those. So what is it? And sometimes those those things are tangible. Well, gosh, I love the way that it feels like you could just run and jump on that on that sofa. It feels squishy and comfortable. Okay, great. Now we're getting somewhere. I love the way that it feels so bright and open and airy. And here's what I want you to think about. I want you to think beyond generic descriptors here. When I was teaching first grade, we would oftentimes write letters to our mom for Mother's Day. And the prompt would be, I like my mom because, right? I like my mom because it would be a sentence starter that would get them their creative juices flowing. And oftentimes they would end like this. I like my mom because she is nice. I like my mom because she is kind, which is true, right? First graders love their moms. (laughs) And mom might be kind, might be nice. But if we start peeling back the layers of what kind is and what nice is, we start understanding that kind is, my mom makes me eggs for breakfast every single morning. Oh, fantastic. Well, what a kind mom. But little Susie's mom doesn't do that. Little Susie's mom is kind too. But little Susie's mom comes out and rides a scooter with her every single afternoon. Right? But you know what? Josh's mom doesn't do either of those things. Josh's mom is kind too. And Josh's mom does something entirely different. Josh's mom reads a book and snuggles in bed with him. Do you see how as we kind of pull back layer after layer after layer, we take those generic descriptors and we turn them into something a little bit more tangible, a little bit more relatable, a little bit more purposeful. And that's what I want you to do with your feeling word. If you say, I want my home to feel cozy. Okay, fantastic. I do too. But what does cozy look like? Because I bet just like in the way our moms are kind, I bet cozy looks so much more different to you than it does to me. So what is it? Asking yourself that next question, why, what, how, is going to be helpful and informative as you start creating those layers of how you create a home that you love. Well, if you want your home to feel cozy, what are the elements that are going to make it cozy for you? Those tangible things that you can bring into or take out of your home to make it that feeling word. And then Molly, quite honestly, sometimes we need to have a little help with the practical application. Sometimes we need a little help with the guidelines and the, I don't want to say rules. Rules are too, rules are too stringent. And even though I am a proverbial rule follower by nature, just ask anyone. (laughs) I follow rules, but really in home decorating, I don't like them. I don't like them at all, but I like guidelines because guidelines have wiggle room and they give us a slight direction in order to make sense of it all. So if you need guidelines, Molly, if you need a little bit of direction to follow, that's what Home Design 101 is all about. And you can find all of the guidelines in there. But start first with creating that vision of what it is you want your home to feel like and recognizing that the way that your home is representing itself now might not currently be the way that you want it to. All right, friend, I hope that those couple of exercises get you on the, on the path of creating a home that reflects you, that when people come into your space, they think, oh my gosh, this is so Molly. This is so fantastic and lovely and wonderful in all the right Molly ways. I hope that's it for you, friend. And if you need help, you can find Home Design 101 at figandfarmathome.com forward slash home hyphen design hyphen 101. All right, friends, if you have a question just like Molly that you want answered on the show, send me an email. Until next time, I'll see you soon. Hey, real quick before you go, if you learned something new or found value in today's podcast, would you head over to iTunes to Fig and Farm at Home and leave a review and subscribe to the show? That would be awesome. And if you'd like to connect with my community of mamas who are learning to be intentional storytellers within their own homes, 
Join us at bit.ly forward slash design 101 group. There's always more room at the table. See you soon.